I'm Zoe Dillahunty Light, and I have played a lot of Pal World. I've flown, swum, plodded, and fought my way across the realms Pal World has to offer, and now I'm ready to bring you my early access Pal World review. If you want to know more about Pal World, make sure to subscribe to Eurogamer and like this review because I have at least two more Pal World videos coming, and you my friend will determine how much more PAL themed content I make. Anyway, let's get on with it. PAL World is a creature collecting, craft heavy, base automation slash defense open world game with familiar themes similar to a game slash franchise beginning with P and ending with Okamon. Explore the absolutely humongous world with all its different biomes, catch the pals you can, craft increasingly advanced tech for your base and your adventures, and, of course, bond with your pals. Pals are creatures who will fight alongside you or work at your base, if caught successfully. Otherwise, they'll just be roaming around in the wild, living their life. Each has different strengths, ranging from lumbering, chopping wood, to mining, to handiwork, to kindling, and many more, all of which are required to work the various contraptions you'll craft. When you're away from base, they'll toddle around, putting items in chests, farming food, eating, relaxing, crafting, chopping wood, mining stone, using mills to turn stone into the hallowed Paldium resource, and much more. It's automation at its cutest. Here is where Pal World shines. By having different species of pals linked to different types of work, you have to go out and hunt for them, increasing both your pal deck and your base's potential. Catching pals is a reward inside of a reward, as not only does it feel satisfying, but you can then expand your base with your new friend working a machine. Because at its core, pal world is heavily focused on base building and base defense. If you're expecting a quest-heavy open world like Breath of the Wild, you are going to be disappointed. Remember though, that PAL world is in early access, so there's a distinct possibility that quests could be added later on in development. Okay, you want to hear about the PALs, don't you? I adore them. Not only because they're cute, but also because they are reminiscent of old-school Pokémon and a special weakness of mine. Each one has unique designs and attacks. They roam specific regions and have their own behavior. So some will flee from you, some will observe from a distance, and others still will try to take you out the second they see you, which I wholeheartedly respect. Overworld bosses largely fall into the latter category and are thrilling encounters themselves, from an admiral penguin to a cat witch whose approval I desperately seek. Catch them, quick warning, you can accidentally make them go ghost mode and it's traumatizing. Just look at me realize I've offed this little gal. And related abilities will unlock in your skill tree, like a harness or saddle or gloves to use these pals as a buddy, mount or glider. One of the things that truly brought me joy was when I got my first flying mount and realized I could actually fly over the map rather than hover pathetically over the grass cutting out a chunk of time-consuming traversal on foot slash hoof slash flipper. This also meant that I didn't have to climb a ton of mountains or try and cross oceans to get where I wanted to go. For those who aren't used as a mode of transport, having specific pals in your party grants you benefits, like increased carrying capacity, lifesteal, or a pal who will attack in tandem with you, like my treasured companion Daydream, who you'll have seen in a lot of this footage. Each pal has their own passive ability, so I really enjoyed switching them in and out of my party depending on what I was about to head out to do. The cat witch Catrus, for example, collects items, whereas another one would increase my carrying capacity, a priceless skill for when I need to go and mine as much ore as possible, which is something you'll become oh too familiar with if you play Pal World. Back to base building. This is the secondary feature of Pal World after catching pals and expanding your pal deck. Your base is your home. It's where you'll craft pal spheres to catch pals, farm, make weapons, armor, incubate eggs, sleep, take care of your pals, and breed them, as long as you have cake to get them in the mood. 
With such a thriving hub of operations comes risks, and wild pals will try and destroy everything you've worked so hard to achieve by blowing everything up. Your level is linked to the amount of things you can craft and the respective strength your base has, so it will take you well into level 20 to even unlock stone foundations and metal gates. You can turn off those aforementioned raids if you don't want that undercurrent of anxiety running through you at all times, especially when you're adventuring away from your base. However, doing so robs you of one of Pal World's main components. This slow drip feed of advanced crafting recipes and the promise of the stronger base keeps the fire lit underneath you to fight, capture, and discover new pals. Some recipes will be locked until you discover the pal they relate to, like Daydream's collar. What that means is that when you see a mysterious question mark in your technology tree, it means you haven't discovered that pal, which means time to do more exploring, which means adventuring through new bits of the world, and your efforts are awarded with those new crafting recipes once you find said pal. Having your tech tree feed into your knowledge of pals is a constant reward, as the exploration component works in tandem with your base becoming more and more formidable. Aside from defense, you have to take care of your pals too. They actually get pretty cranky if you don't. Building them a spa helps them relax after working too hard, for example, and having food and beds ready at all times is crucial to keeping them in a good mood. But even with the spa and refreshments, your pals can get injured, stressed, and even develop eating disorders. In those situations, you're responsible for healing them with medicine, or at least taking them off of your base roster and letting them rest, while you try to find a merchant who can heal that sprain. The path you're taken on when you're building your base is carefully structured to make sure your eyes don't get too big for your belly, metaphorically speaking. Criteria has to be fulfilled before you can level up your base and have more pals work on it, ensuring you have the kind of prerequisite infrastructure to contain the eventual processing lines you'll have. If you're the kind of person who likes Factorio, Astroneer, Satisfactory, or Stardew Valley, then you'll feel that intense satisfaction looking upon your works in Pal World, as your base merrily chugs along in your absence, with a ton of resources at your disposal when you return. The whole base building element of Pal World is fantastically done, and there's very little I can find wrong with it. In terms of story, Pal World does have a tale, but with so few NPCs and settlements, it is something you'll have to hunt down in the logs left by a previous explorer. The logs give you clues about the kinds of things you can do with pals and the secrets the world holds, so they're always worth reading instead of skipping over, as I know some people do prefer to do. I really like this. As someone who loves story, I'll never pass up the chance to read an abandoned memo, but it also gave me some pretty good pointers early on in the game of what I should be doing and the kinds of things I should look out for. Look, as you've gathered by now, I adore Pal World. It's not perfect, I've run into some issues with the pathfinding of pals around my base, the human enemies are repetitive and don't really add anything to the game, dungeons are lacklustre and the lack of quests was a surprise. Like that other big game about tiny creatures, there are bosses for each area with their own arena. Beating them doesn't do much apart from getting you adequately impressive resources, to be honest, but their design is cool enough to warrant seeking them out. But all of those things kind of fade into the background once I'm in Pal World. As Pal World is in early access at the time of this review, those things could very well be updated or revised in future patches and updates, and if that turns out to be the case, keep an eye out for my updated reviews of Pal World. For now, Pal World is a fantastic base builder, base defense, and collection game, and as long as you're not expecting more than that, you're bound to have a great time with it. That is my Pal World Early Access Review. As time goes on and the developers release patches and updates, as again it is in early access at the moment, I'll be revisiting this review and posting my updated thoughts in video format, so if that sounds like something you'd want to watch before you decide if Pal World is for you, feel free to subscribe to Eurogamer and drop a like on this video, as that gives me an indication of whether Pal World updates would be helpful.
For those of you who have played Pal World, what do you think of it? I wonder if Game Freak are looking on from the shadows, maybe taking notes for the future? Anyway, that's just my own theory. So thanks so much for getting this far and listening to my Pal World review. I, Zoe Delhanty Light, will be streaming Pal World on the Eurogamer channel, so keep an eye out for that so I'll maybe see you then, but if not, thanks for choosing to spend your time with me. Now, I'm going to go and get some Lambles on LMGs to defend my base, so I'll see you folks next time.